Um, welcome. Uh, so my name is Etienne. Uh, I work uh, for Freelies, a company based in France, and uh, we do uh, mainly like open source uh, services with QGIS and PostgreSQL. So that's why I'm here to talk about PG Metadata. So it's a plugin that we made, and uh, with my colleague as well, Michael Duchin, is in the corridor in another conference. So first, uh, what is uh, metadata? It's I guess you know, like to help your users uh, to know your data. It's data on your data. So what do we mean? And we mean uh, like identification, so title, abstract, categories, the keywords uh, about your data. Uh, it can be special properties, uh, the special level. Is it designed at the city level or is it designed uh, for the province or the country? Uh, optimal scales, which the data can be visible. Uh, it can be publication, like the date, the frequency of update, uh, the license, the confidentiality of the data. Is it private? Is it open data? Uh, it can be like also what we call computed, uh, like the fetch account, uh, the geometry type, the projection, etc. And also contacts, uh, so owners, publishers, custodian, and also links to like external resources, images, PDF, uh, etc. So we started the project like uh, PG Metadata, so it's a QGIS plugin to store metadata about like uh, tables stored in PostgreSQL vector database. Uh, and it works also for raster. Um, so it's just centralized, like it's a schema. You can see it uh, on the on the right side, like PGP data. So we are storing like internal tables. Uh, it's accessible because it's easy, like you just need to share your connection and you have all your metadata within like your database. Um, we benefit from all the features from PostgreSQL. So I guess most of you know PostgreSQL, it's like very powerful uh, database engine with relation, constraints, views, and function and triggers that we are using in this plugin. Uh, it has rights access, uh, readers versus editors. Uh, you can see and edit your metadata with your favorite SQL client. So Maybe you are using LibreOffice or PGNmin, but of course you are as well using QGIS as a PostgreSQL client, and you know how to use it. So, um, and also it's easy as you need some backups of your data. You also uh, you have just a, a new schema to restore, and uh, so it's easy to uh, to move. So there are three different aspects. First, I'm going to cover like um, PG Metadata for GIS administrator. Um, so the first step is to install the plugin, of course. Then uh, it comes in the processing toolbox. You have a, a different set of algorithms uh, added in the toolbox. So the first one is the installation of the database structure. Uh, it will create the four or five tables and the PostgreSQL views and functions and triggers. Uh, then there is another processing algorithm to create the, the administration project. And in this project, it will just, uh, it's, it's like an, uh, we are using QGIS to edit uh, these tables because QGIS is a great client. It has great uh, features for editing uh, PostgreSQL uh, tables. So we have a configuration group. So it's to define like your contact, uh, your links, your HTML templates, some glossary, etc. Then we have some information tables. It's just uh, like statistics or like uh, some um, helpers uh, for you. Um, and then we use QGIS uh, drag and drop forms uh, for editing your metadata. So we don't. Uh, do too much in the plugin. It's mostly uh, QGIS features. So here you can add new theme or you can create uh, new contacts. 
yes, you can define your own themes. Uh, and one contact can belong to one or many data set. So it's uh, using relation in QGIS. And uh, we added some translation. So it's in French, English, Italian, German, um, other languages as well. So if some are missing, uh, please ping us. We will be happy to, to add them. And then, as I said, it's using all the forms from QGIS. So it's very uh, straightforward. Uh, at the top, you define your schema. Uh, it's, it's, it's a drop-down menu listing all your schema from uh, your database. And then it's listing all the tables within the schema. And there is just uh, three tabs, uh, like uh, properties, contacts, and links. And then inside, you have the basic uh, fields that I showed you before. Title, abstract, keywords, themes. It's using the widgets uh, in QGIS for data editing. Uh, yes. Some fields are uh, automatically computed, like we are adding a unique ID um, uh, in the table when we add a, a new row in the, in the database. Uh, layer extent, fetch account, geometry type, uh, projection ID and name. That's also uh, all kind of uh, items which can be computed. Uh, creation and, and update timestamps, like when was the last time you edited this metadata or the layer. We are also providing some useful views for the GIS administrator. For instance, orphan PostgreSQL tables. It's like... Um, you created a new table uh, for like uh, trees uh, in your database. It will the view will detect and will show you. Okay, this table doesn't have a, a metadata entry in the schema in the PG metadata. So it's to show you orphan tables, and we have the reverse as well orphan metadata. So it means maybe at that time uh, you added the metadata about the trees uh, layer. You deleted the tree layer, but your metadata still exists in your database. So we have a special view showing you uh, orphan metadata. And also a flat representation of the data set, because as I said, like a data set can have one or many contacts with a role, like a custodian, uh, publisher, etc., or one or many links. So we have a flat representation for like CSV export, for instance. Um, for the GIS user, like not the V administrator, um, the plugin comes in the um, QGIS locator bar, you know, at the bottom uh, left corner. You can start writing uh, meta or you can start typing trees and then the plugin will just look in the PG metadata schema and just try to find either in the title or in the abstract or in keywords. Okay, I have this layer uh, for, uh, for trees. Okay, let's add it. And you can see also uh, the doc on the right. Uh, it's an HTML representation of the PG metadata schema for this layer. When you click on the layer in the legend, it will just detect and show you uh, additional information. Uh, it's possible to export uh, this uh, metadata to HTML, PDF, or DCAT. Uh, it's a XML representation from uh, the metadata, so it, I put you the link. Uh, some advanced features. It's possible to um, change the HTML templates. You saw it was a blue and it was so you can customize and add new fields or just to change the HTML template if you want to customize the layout of the, the rendering. Everything is done in SQL. Actually, the plugin, it's like 30% uh, of Python. I think most of the code is SQL. It's just functions, SQL functions, SQL triggers. So we have a simple function like select PG metadata dot get dataset item HTML content. We put the name of the schema, the name of the table, and then the language in which we want uh, the HTML output. So then you are free to 
use your own client, make this simple SQL query, and it will generate for you all the HTML uh, for this data set in the language you requested. You can as well uh, generate the DCAT representation, select everything from pgmetadata.get dataset as DCAT XML, and you can still put a language. Uh, can be for like either you can specify also the schema on the table. And if you use PG Metadata within your organization, you can, uh, you know, use a QGIS uh, free dot uh, ini file configuration for plugins. So you can deploy on many computers and you saw there is some algorithm which are only for GIS administrators to set up the database edit the metadata. This is only for GIS administrators, but maybe you don't want all your users to uh, be able to edit this layer or to update the database. So you can uh, add this uh, variable end users only. So it means it's only like a GIS uh, uh, end users, not uh, administrators, to hide some specific algorithm from the toolbox. So it's only just a simplified uh, toolbox. Um, so as I said, all the plugin is like SQL centric, like most of the logic is done in the database itself. So the plugin, it's useful for the QGIS locator bar. It's useful for the doc, but if you don't want, like you can just install the schema, uh, follow the update of the schema. It's, it's a very simple uh, like uh, schema. It has mainly four tables, then it's a set of views, functions, and triggers. So it's easy to maintain. Uh, it's all the logic is done in SQL. So you can connect to another tool if you want, if you want to get the metadata as HTML in another client. For instance, um, we at release uh, are working also on Lismap. Uh, there is a conference tomorrow at two o'clock in the afternoon for information. And we decided to just connect uh, the the, mod, the web client to this schema. So it's just doing a select star uh, from uh, pgmetadata.get uh, dataset as HTML. So all the logic is done in the database and we have an HTML back and we just display it in a client, in this case, uh, Lismap. And also uh, we saw that there is a DCAT uh, catalog so we can give a URL or an entry point, you just give this URL, it executes the SQL query, and you have all your DCAT XML, and then it can be harvested by an uh, open data portal. This is some links about the documentation. So there is three sections for the administrator, for end users, and for the system administrator. Um, as a conclusion, so, you might wonder, okay, why another metadata tool? Because I know we are, there are many. <laughs> um, first, uh, because we rely on PostgreSQL and uh, it has many features, it's very robust. Uh, most of uh, features with QGIS works very well with uh, PostgreSQL. With QGIS, uh, editing forms, etc., works well with PostgreSQL. Um, it's a very tiny schema uh, in the PostgreSQL database. So it's very close to the data. It just asks like, uh, okay, which schema and which table uh, you want to add the metadata item. Um, it's not a new application. You see, it's just a way to store the metadata. Um, you have some tools or you can extend just by doing some select in your other uh, client to get uh, metadata. Um, yes, um, you don't need to learn, it's just easy in QGIS as you're using the locator and just typing um, to search for trees, you just open the locator bar in QGIS, you type trees and PGMeter will look for existing uh, tables. And um, yes, it's not like um, a web data portal, it's just a way to we wanted to keep it KISS, like keep it simple and easy. 
uh, stupid, sorry, <laughs> to have just uh, some uh, basic metadata stored in the in the schema. We don't want to provide a full set of uh, tools. It's just uh, title, abstract keywords, themes, uh, just a few fields that people need to register on their layers. Yeah, that's um, we just released one version last week uh, that was mainly a maintenance version. Um, but earlier this year, we got like contributions. So we really thanks them. Uh, Florian Jen and uh, Ross McDonald, they contributed to Pgmtata by, by submitting pull requests on GitHub to provide uh, more like uh, inspired terms about contacts and roles uh, and also about the UK open government license. So. It's nice to know that it's used there. Like it's difficult to, to have feedbacks when we provide open source uh, tools. We don't know sometimes our users, uh, but of course we have many ideas. Uh, we are aware that there is a QGIS metadata panel uh, when you open the layer properties in QGIS. We uh, follow it like uh, all these fields from QGIS to match uh, like uh, our fields in the schema. So it's possible to do uh, a one-to-one -one match. Uh, it's, it has not been done yet. Uh, it's in our roundup. We would like to integrate more with QGIS desktop. Uh, metadata is, is a big uh, topic on QGIS. There is a QEP, a QGIS, uh, I forgot the acronym, Thanks, enhancement proposal. <laughs> so there is a big one on the QGIS metadata about like, okay, how do we store metadata? What, how do we copy paste metadata between layers? Is there like inheritance between a provider and layers, etc.? So a Python plugin, like it doesn't solve all these uh, problems, like uh, questions, but at least it's just one way to make one step forward and try. Um, yeah, like autofill, uh, like, uh, okay, how can I copy paste uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, autofill many layers, sharing the same uh, contact, for instance. Uh, import export to the, uh, yeah, to the native layer metadata properties, and also import uh, DCAT catalog, we can export to DCAT, so why not importing it? So, yeah. And that's, it's, that's just the links, database structure, and everything is on GitHub, translations as well. And yes, and thanks for the GAR province in France for initiating this work. And to some contributors, uh, that's, yeah, all translations. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> And now for the questions from the audience. Well, first of all, thank you for building this and for your presentation. I, I have a use case. I have a database in Postgres where we kind of store all of the data, but then if we have a project, we will create a new database and just copy some tables. And now I also want to move metadata for those tables into the new database. But since um, we are referencing um, the IDs um, between the tables, so the, the, um, the well, the numbers, not the u universal uh, IDs, Yes. Uh, would this work or, well, I, I haven't tried it, but uh, so can I just copy the tables and, or copy the whole schema there and then filter out? But what if I already, let's say some users already, so let's say I will copy 10 tables to the new database and the users will add some extra tables, add extra metadata already and then I will want to add another five tables from the main database there, and then the sequence wouldn't be the same. So maybe if 
maybe you universal unique identifier would solve this probably but maybe it would introduce some other issues i don't know i i didn't try it because yeah. i didn't have to and i said okay maybe in bratislava i can ask and uh, we, uh, maybe i will we'll get a better solution to this problem so the main thing about this it's uh as i said kiss so the only way to identify the there is a unique id generated for each row uh like but this it's just for like uh if you want to copy this link on the somewhere but the main thing is here you see it's just asking for you the schema and the table that's that's the only like uh link uh and then it will uh, just be used uh, by these orphan, yes, as I said, orphan metadata views. So you can copy paste your schema. Uh, the view will be executed and it will detect, okay, this is an orphan metadata because uh, we don't see the matching row in your database or it's an orphan table. It has no metadata in this uh, in the table. So then you can just uh run uh the view just check uh i often in qgis um do the fetch account um yes i'm not sure where was it <laughs> in the qgis legend i show a show fetch account about qgis metadata orphan to see like okay is it, it should be zero about orphan metadata for instance so you can copy paste and uh uh, just uh, just check your schema name and table name, and more or less that's it. Yeah, but I'm I'm a bit worried about the links tables and contacts because those are but this... referring to the ID of the data set. I uh, know it's no. uh, it's really linked to the but uh, we can check, but uh, it's really following in the table name and schema name. Uh, that's what will be like the what will be used for these views the id is for the internal schema uh, it will be unique because it's a uuid um, but uh, for your special use case uh, we can uh, use some conflation tool uh, for like uh, okay checking duplicates if you have many users <laughs> Uh, it's possible to do like PostgreSQL like difference between two tables. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so thank you. So yeah. I, I okay. will try it if I will uh, have any problems, questions that okay. I cannot solve. Maybe I will email you. Thanks. Uh, I have a question about your package. Do you plan maybe to? Uh, make more features to support your package because your package is the default file uh, uh, file format for QGIS for uh, some time now and it's based on the SQLite which is mostly standard SQL so do you have any plans in this area? Um, these tables can be created in a geo package that would be possible, but then the triggers and functions that's very like PostgreSQL oriented, like to generate all the HTML. So it would be a subset of uh, the schema. Uh, but we think about like using also PGM data, but to store like uh, people may, ha may have like network drives uh, with geo package, so not strictly like embedding the metadata into the geo package, but there is a feature request on GitHub about like allowing a uh, path, file path on the files on the network drive to store the metadata, not related just to schema and table, but to a, a drive or a file path. So, but not embedding the metadata into the job package. That would be not possible with PG metadata plugin because uh, the the SQL is too complex, I think, for uh, geo package. Uh, we are generating all the HTML within the database. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your presentation and for your questions. Uh, we will continue in uh, half past uh, four with the next presentation. Thank you.